Hello and welcome back to the course. We're going to start looking at line integrals. So we start uh, chapter three now. Right. So this is uh, section 3.1, part one of section 3.1. All right. So maybe let me move that over here. Uh, let's define what uh, we mean by a piecewise C1 path. Or, Sometimes we might just say a path for short. Uh, generally, in in this course, path is going to mean piecewise C1 path. There's going to be a, a a couple of places, and there uh, we'll make it uh, uh, we'll make it explicit where we just mean continuous. But uh, but generally, we'll mean uh, piecewise C1. Um, and so, uh, what does that mean? It's it's a function gamma which is continuous, let's call it complex value, right? Uh, and it's piecewise continuously differentiable. Um, I'll, I'll say a bit more about that. And all its one-sided, uh, uh, well, well, all the one-sided limits of gamma prime are never zero. So basically, in, in, you know, in a sense, gamma prime is never zero, but even, even the one-sided limits of it, right? Because if we're saying piecewise, it might gamma prime might be undefined at finitely many points, but then the the one-sided limits of it should be non-zero. All right. Now another uh, another new word closed. If if we say a path is closed, that just means it ends where it started. Right. So if we're saying it's uh, from the set A B. Uh, gamma A is equal to gamma B, right? Now, it's simple closed if it never crosses itself, right? So there's there's clearly this, uh, you know, gamma A is equal to gamma B uh, because it's closed, right? But uh, then none of the other points are allowed to uh, be any other point, right? And including the the end right uh, the end point right only the only the end points are allowed to touch right it's it, the end point is not allowed to touch anything inside and no inside points are allowed to touch so that's why we're sort of you know that, that's really what we mean by this being injective and notice that it's not the open interval it's the half open interval um it could be the other half open interval it would be the same same idea so, so no points are allowed to touch except the endpoints. That's that's basically what it is. It's almost injective, except you know it's it's allowed to come back to where it started. That's the only place where it's allowed a non-injectivity. All right, piecewise C1. What does it mean? It means that there's a partition. So there's uh, some numbers t0, t1, t2, t2, and so on uh, that are between A, B. So T0 is A, and let's say TK is B. Uh, uh, so I've, I've basically cut up uh, this interval AB uh, into K subintervals, and I'm saying that uh, the restriction of gamma is C1, and by that I mean up to the endpoints, right? So the derivative exists up to the endpoints of the restriction. Of course, the, the uh, gamma is not going to be probably differentiable at the endpoints, but the restriction is going to be differentiable, right? We're going to see an example of that in a moment. And I want the derivative, this guy, to never be zero, right? Uh, now, another way of stating that uh, is that uh, this um, uh, this uh, gamma is, is continuously differentiable on the open intervals, Gamma prime is never zero, and the uh, the um, uh, one-sided limits of gamma prime are never zero. They exist; they must exist, and are never zero. So that's another way of uh, showing that this is a piecewise C one path. Um, by the way, this this idea that gamma prime is never zero, we won't really need it most of the time. Uh, if I remember right, as, as the, the, <laughs> there, there's like one or two times in the in the book where um, where that becomes useful. 
Uh, but it's it's mostly not needed. But it is if I want to talk about a piecewise C1 path, this is a fairly reasonable um, uh, assumption, um, and it does make it sometimes does make some arguments easier. Uh, it also disallows certain things that, that you wouldn't really think of as a piecewise C1 path, right? Uh, for example, you know, let's suppose that it's just C1, but you wouldn't, um, uh, you know, you would allow the derivative to vanish. Now, you could still have corners. Uh, you can have a you can have a corner by having the um, the gamma prime uh, vanish um, at that point. So there's a uh, you know there's a some exercise in the book about uh, that you know what what kind of weird uh, things you can do if you uh, if you don't uh, assume that gamma prime is never zero, right? So it's a useful thing to, you know to be able to uh, you know to have some geometric intuition of what piecewise uh, piecewise C1 path are um, is uh, you know they really are what you would imagine them to be. They're kind of sort of nice smooth paths with finitely many corners, right? For that you need the the gamma prime is not equal to zero. Now every once in a while we'll we'll have a we'll have a statement that's actually true even with I mean a lot of times actually we'll have statements that are true even if you allow gamma prime to be zero. Um, so, and sometimes that's useful, and then we'll mention it. All right. Uh, <clears throat> now, when we talk about these these paths, um, it's a lot of times we're interested in the set, uh, in the in the image of this uh, of this interval under gamma. But it's that's kind of you know <laughs> annoying to keep writing. So sometimes we'll write gamma to mean the set. If it's a if it's a path, it's, yeah, I guess it is a little bit of a um, abusive notation, but it it's never really um, uh, you know it's never really confusing. Um, so if it's used as a set, it is the image. If it's used as a function, it is the function. Um, so you know we'll say stuff like y as a new, or maybe even write as a as a subset if if we if we mean that. It's it's a subset as a <coughs> the image is a subset. All right, so here's an example. So I have uh, so this uh, you know parameterized square, right? So it's uh, it's it's just gonna always be linear on each one, right? So it's these four corners. It's a simple closed curve. Now, if you and it's you know here the uh, intervals zero to four. You could do it with uh, with other intervals. Uh, same same square. Uh, this is convenient, right? So, for example, on the on the first from from zero to one, uh, the guy is just t, right? So you have, uh, for example, the the gamma prime is just one, right? The derivative of t is one. Uh, so you definitely have that inside. Gamma prime at one doesn't exist, but the uh, uh, the one-sided limit uh, does exist, right? Uh, I can I can go up uh, uh, from below um, to towards one, and because it's always one here, it's one at the end point, right? Now similarly over here, the derivative is i, and if I take the one-sided limit, it's still i, right? Yeah, so this is a nice uh, C, piecewise C1 path, it's simple closed, right? Um, as nice as, as, as we'd want, right? So what are we going to do with these things? We're going to integrate holomorphic functions on it. Well, let's we'll just integrate continuous functions uh, first, right? Or really any sort of functions that <laughs> whatever integral we have that is going to work on those functions, right? Uh, for most of the this this course, Riemann integral uh, is sufficient, and we won't really need um, we won't really need Lebesgue integral. Uh, although sometimes it might be useful to think in you know that it's a Lebesgue integral if you know Lebesgue integral. If you don't, you know, don't worry about it. Nothing's lost. Uh, everything we do will work for Riemann integral. So if we have a continuous function, so that we don't have to worry about 
integrability uh, on this piecewise C1 path, then we define this um, symbol, right? It'll just right now, we just write this out. You know, this is just nonsense. And we say, whatever it is, this is, it's this Riemann integral over here. Is this, you know, calc one integral uh, out here in terms of some parameter t, right? You really have, uh, here you have the f of z, and here you have the dz, right? It's, it works exactly how you would think it, would, it should work uh, uh, in calculus. All right, so, and the right-hand side does make sense. It is integrable uh, because is a, f is a continuous function, so this part is a continuous function. Um, okay, this guy might not be a continuous function, right? Gamma is, gamma prime, well, it's undefined at, at finitely many points, but that doesn't really matter for, uh, for a, a Riemann integral. It's bounded, it's continuous uh, outside of a finite set. Yeah, that's that's Riemann integral. That's perfectly fine. So so this thing really does exist, right? Even as far as Riemann integral is concerned, uh, right? And and actually, the the definition over here, uh, if we write this for a gamma where gamma prime is zero somewhere, it's still the same thing. We still just mean this. It still makes sense, right? So it doesn't have to be a piecewise C1 path as we define piecewise C1 path. It, it, it could be slightly worse. It could be that gamma prime is zero. That's that's perfectly fine for the definition, right? It, the definition doesn't care, right? Uh, going to zero is fine. <laughs> Blowing up would be bad, but uh, going to zero is fine. All right, so let's let's uh, compute a certain very useful uh, path integral. Uh, one that 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 will need a lot. So this is not just an example. This is something that 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 is really useful in in computations. Uh, strangely, because it's uh, uh, very simple. So let's suppose that I look at uh, a disk of radius r around zero for simplicity, right? Otherwise, there's going to be just a plus something, right? Uh, but so it's this uh, this gamma over here. R is fixed, and t is the parameter. It it varies between 0 and 2 pi, or maybe minus pi to pi, however you want to parameterize it. We'll parameterize it right now as 0 to 2 pi. So we start at this point, and we go around the circle, and we end at this point. Again, simple closed path. This one is actually not piecewise C1. It is actually C1. Uh, so, uh, right. Um, and it's something about... Um, Something about uh, uh, paths is that you know the orientation is important, right? Uh, which direction I'm traveling. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, we'll we'll see that next time. Uh, it's I'm traveling counterclockwise, and generally when we um, when we're gonna say that we're gonna integrate a set like this, will mean the counterclockwise orientation, right? Will mean going around counterclockwise. All right, now, so for this gamma, right now it's dependent on gamma, right? Not just on the set, right? On, so it's dependent on the function. We'll talk more about that, but it's not really dependent on the function later. Uh, so this integral of a power of Zn, right, is, you can compute it exactly, it's e to 2 pi i, and that's only in the case when n is uh, <coughs> equal to negative 1. So only if it's 1 over z, right? And it's 0 otherwise for all other n, positive, negative, 0, um, you know, uh, whatever, right? So how do we get that? Uh, well, let's just plug it into the definition, right? This is really simple computation, just calculus computation. So first, you compute the derivative. The derivative is really easy. Uh, the derivative of the exponential is just itself. There's a there's a constant out there. The constant has to come out by chain rule. So I have i r e to the i t, right? So if I start with this integral, I 
just plug it into the definition. I haven't done anything. I've just written out what this means, right? I go from A to B, right? Here, 0 to 2 pi. There is a, uh, you know, here is the Z to the N, right? I plug in gamma. I raise this to the N. That's, that's this guy, right? And uh, then I have uh, uh, gamma prime, right? I, R, E to the I, T, right? And dt, right? So that's 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 all I did, right? No, no computation yet. It's, I just wrote down what this means. Um, all right. Well, I'm integrating with respect to t. So r, as far as the integral is concerned, is a constant. I could just pull that out. So I have i, r, n plus one because I had one r over here and n r is over here. So I pull this out. I pull out the i. And so I get this, it's just a, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's just a constant. And, uh, and I'm integrating this guy, right? So I'm just integrating, you know, some power of the exponential of the either it, basically, right? Now, if n plus 1, because I'm, this is the n plus 1 power, if, the, if that's 0, then this guy is just 1. And I'm integrating from 0 to 2 pi, dt, right? Meaning that the integral is 2 pi. Uh, if n plus 1 is 0, r to the n plus 1 is just 1. So I have i times 2 pi. So I do get 2 pi i, right? Now, for all other n, this is really a calculus exercise, um, you could, uh, you know, you could easily, well, uh, you know, it's, you can either do it by uh, just uh, thinking about the fundamental of calculus, if you're, uh, uh, you know, if you're worried about fundamental of calculus with respect to complex valued functions, uh, it still works, but you have to, uh, you know, you're going to write down why it works. It's, it's really easy. Uh, but uh, if you're worried about it, just write it down in terms of sines and cosines, and, and it's immediate, right? Um, so that's just, uh, uh, that's just uh, calc 1. Uh, uh, exercise, right? That for all all the other guys, uh, this integral is zero, right? All right. So we've computed completely this uh, this integral, and um, and in some sense, that means we've computed all the integrals that we'll ever need to compute. It looks weird, but that's true. Uh, once you know how it works for z to the n, well, you know, every function that we're going to be interested in, every holomorphic function we're going to show is an analytic. And uh, every analytic function has a power series. Power series is composed of z to the n's. And every uh, path that I have in the end could be sort of deformed or, or changed into uh, you know, a bunch of circles around sort of bad points. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's going to be the, you know, that's essentially, in the end, once you know how to compute this one, you know how to compute all of them. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but, uh, but essentially that's what it is. This, everything sort of boils down to this guy over here. Uh, <clears throat> Now, note one thing uh, which is uh, uh, which you can see immediately is that in this particular integral, it didn't really matter what r was, right? Uh, it was independent of r, and that's actually you know a much more is true. It's it's uh, you don't even have to go around a, a, a circle. You can go around you know a, a strange shape, and it's and it's the same thing as around this thing. We'll have to prove that, but uh, you know, the first thing that we notice here is that hey, it doesn't really depend on R, right? C to zero or something that doesn't depend on R. All right, now the definition of path integral is the same one that you've seen in in, in vector calculus or or, or <laughs> third semester calculus or wherever wherever it is that you did uh, path integrals, right? Wherever it is that you did integrals like this. If you remember, <laughs> I'm assuming you remember. Um, although, I mean, we won't need any of that, but uh, uh, 
if you remember from your culture class, uh, so you had this this PDX uh, QDY uh, uh, kind of expression that you were integrating uh, just in the plane, right? Now the idea, if you want to relate what we did to that, is to write dz as uh, uh, dx plus i dy, right? If the dz, if we write it like this, right? I mean, so far we've only defined it as like it's it's this formal expression over here. We you know it's not doesn't actually mean anything, right? We just said what this thing is, but you could you could define it in terms of dx and dy, um, and let's see if it makes sense. Gamma prime, oh sorry, gamma uh, is uh, is x plus i y, right? So I have uh, you know let's let's treat x and y as as, as functions. Uh, of t, just like gamma, uh, and yeah, let, let's see what happens. So I have, uh, you know, if dz is supposed to be this thing, then, uh, uh, you know, and I'm basically doing what, what I'd be doing in, in vector calculus once I have, you know, once I know how to compute these sort of integrals, right? Uh, so, you know, if but this is what it w would be. Well, that's 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 just this. Um, and uh, well, how do I compute it in terms of calc three? Well, I go from A to B, just like before. And uh, I put in the dx and the dy, which is um, x prime t dt and y prime t dt. Um, and there's an i out here, right? Before the uh, uh, you know coming from this i over here. All right. Well, that's exactly right. If I factor out the 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 f of gamma, right? I just get gamma prime, right? So this really is uh, uh, f of uh, uh, gamma of t times gamma prime of t, right? Which is precisely the way that we define this thing. So it is the same definition. There is nothing nothing new. It is just like calc, uh, uh, calc three. Now, in fact, uh, so with dz, with just this thing, you uh, it's uh, you can't immediately write down every every integral that way uh, as as just uh, you know one of these things. But if you also have uh, z bar, so dz bar, well, let's just make it the bar of dz, right? So dx minus i dy. You can actually write any integral form calc three as as an integral. It's this this f and g are going to be different than the p and q, but you can write a formula that goes between the two, right? You can go from f and g to p and q, or p and q to to f and g, uh, very simply. So this is an exercise to go right. How you would? It's a simple algebraic uh, computation, right? Uh, so you can write down any calc three integral in terms of uh, the dz and dz bar, right? So instead of dx dy, you can write it dz dz bar. Uh, so, as I said, you know, a couple of times before, a lot of times that's actually a useful way to think in complex analysis. If you have complex variables, then uh, you know, even if you don't have something uh, uh, that only you know that's holomorphic, that's only going to depend on z, you might have some z bars around. Yeah, so you can do all of the the the, the normal analysis. Uh, you know, not complex analysis. Uh, if you stick in a, a z bar, right? All right. So, uh, so that's it. So next time we're going to look more at uh, you know, it's uh, a couple more lectures on uh, online integrals. All right. Cool. So, uh, see you next time.